Hello today and welcome back to Sky the Third. I did it. I won 400 battles or 200 or 150, however many we needed. We're up to 400 victories won, which means we can go into Star Door 13 now. Let's check that out. Only those who have struggled through countless battles are worthy of entering here. Only upon finishing the 400th battle will this door be opened. You know, it says countless, but then it gives you an exact number. It's a little contradictory. This is a cool door. We're about to get some we're about to get some story, some world building. About to answer some questions. But what are the questions? It's an old one. I shall grant to you a memory fragment and my blessing. This is gonna kinda be like the salt pail one. I think we're gonna be reading like documents. If I recall correctly. Oh no, the guild! Report on the attack on Erebonia's Bracer Guilds. In 1202 of the Septian Calendar, many of the branches of the Bracer Guild in Erebonia came under attack in quick succession. The perpetrators were an armed group, but all else about them was unknown, and the guild, along with all connected to it, and the nation fell into a state of confusion. Before long, the Orbital Communications Network in the capital was rife with calls and messages. And the situation grew increasingly grave. From the Intelligence Division 1st Subdivision to General Staff Office. At dawn yesterday, the capital's guild houses were completely destroyed by powerful explosives. According to the 2nd Subdivision's analysis, the explosives were likely set directly below those buildings in the city's underground waterways. Judging by explosives used and means employed, this was the work of professionals, currently working to confirm the locations of potentially dangerous persons within the country. From Intelligence Division 3rd Subdivision to Intelligence Division 1st Subdivision, a Jaeger member has been found among those suspected of entering the country illegally. Confirmed to be responsible for logistics in the Jester Jaeger Corps, Keep an eye on other members of the same core in, th in the country. From Erebonian Bracer Guild to Liberlian Bracer Guild Grand Cell Branch. At dawn today, the guild houses in Heimdall came under attack. We are unable to contact the Bracers charged with overseeing them. We request the aid of high-ranking Bracers. This is urgent. We repeat, this is urgent. From Intelligence Division 1st Subdivision to General Staff Office. The Bracer Guild here in Erebonia has sent a message to the Guild's Grand Cell Branch. Judging by the contents of the message, at least one high-ranking Bracer will be entering Erebonia in the coming days. We request they be pursued and put under strict surveillance upon arrival. So this would be uh, the Imperial Capital Heimdall. Two days after the assault began, Cassius Bright, S-Rank, arrived in the Imperial Capital. He assumed the post of provisional representative of the Erebonian Guild. After doing so, he assessed the damage to the guilds and called for the bracers assigned to them, who had become scattered in the chaos, to reconvene outside the city. He also ordered a halt to all orbital communications to prevent interception by the enemy. By this point, guilds in six cities had been attacked, and the bracer guild in Erebonia was beginning to struggle to function. The branches that had not yet been attacked requested the army's protection. However, they seemed to be in no hurry to grant their support, making it clear that they could not be counted upon. Meanwhile, the provisional representative was able to estimate the rough location of the enemy's supply base from their movements up to that point. And after choosing a small number of bracers who were familiar with the area, he sent them to try and find it. His reasoning for going with this approach was that he had concluded the enemy would have to build a supply base inside the country because of how strict Erebonia's border controls are. It did not take long for his lose the battle but win the war strategy to produce results. From Intelligence Division 1st Subdivision to General Staff Office. The bracer sent by Liberals Guild is confirmed to be one Cassius Bright. Bright is an s rank Bracer, whose file in our subdivision has him rated as a L4 threat, the second highest level possible. He is also the man believed to have commanded the counteroffensive against the Imperial Army during the Hundred Days War. 
may potentially pose a threat to national security, so he is being carefully watched. From Intelligence Division 1st Subdivision to General Staff Office. Attempt to track CB failed. Current whereabouts are unknown. However, as requested by HQ, we have not raised the alert level and have left it as it stands. Several bracers are currently traveling aboard a train. We believe them to be taking part in some kind of operation. From Intelligence Division 1st Subdivision to General Staff Office, six bracers assaulted the Jaeger's base. The Jaegers inside the base were apprehended. We have identified them to be members of the Jester Jaeger Corps. No reading any of that, though it is a guild document. The discovery of the enemy's base revealed that it was a Jaeger Corps known as Jester who was behind the attacks. After this, however, the Jaeger's movements became much more passive, and the two sides entered a deadlock. The stalemate continued for roughly two months. During this time, the guild representative made contact with the intelligence division and began preparing for an operation that would ultimately allow him to bring the trouble to an end. From Intelligence Division 1st Subdivision to General Staff Office, CB has made contact with a member of our subdivision, currently in the process of confirming. From Intelligence Division 1st Subdivision to General Staff Office, the target CB has proposed a joint operation, intending to meet him again at the specified date and time. So let's see, I don't think I can make out too much of that. I see the signatures there on the right column. They, those might be legible if I wasn't playing right now. I could like zoom in on them. But uh, there are also those binders on the shelf that are uh, labeled. One of them says Phantom Thief B, the green one there in the first like of the green set. You got arms development, uh, military development. Uh, the War of Hundred Years. I don't know if that's like a English translation done by Falcom for like the Hundred Days War. But it bears looking at this image again. Strategic analysis of the Bracer Guild attack, Intelligence Division 2nd Subdivision. What eventually broke the deadlock was a brilliant strategy devised by CB. Having successfully made contact with a member of the Intelligence Division, he made them send a message to HQ in the hopes it would be intercepted by the enemy. What happened was exactly that. From the message, they were able to deduce the time and place the next meeting would happen, and set about plotting his assassination. Exactly what CB hoped would happen. During the meeting, CB had also given said Intelligence Division member in a coded message. It contained detailed plans for an operation in which the Imperial Army would defeat the Jaegers after they had been lured out by false information. The General Staff Office chose to go ahead with the proposed plan, and after a joint operation with the Bracer Guild, the Jaegers who had gathered to assassinate CB were surrounded and forced to surrender. Furthermore, the remnants of their forces who were in other bases were also defeated after the initial prisoners gave up their locations. Several months after the trouble began, Jester was completely dismantled. From Intelligence Division 1st Subdivision to General Staff Office, Raising the threat level of Cassius Bright, S-Rank Bracer, effective immediately. Henceforth, he will be regarded as a L5 threat. He poses a severe threat to national security and must be placed under strict surveillance if he ever enters the country again. From Intelligence Division 1st Subdivision to General Staff Office. Confirmed that the surveillance target left the country today. His departure was without incident. Handing control over the mission over to our foreign agencies. Transmission over. From GSO Special Investigative Department to His Excellency the Imperial Chancellor. We have also confirmed CB's departure. We shall continue to pursue him, but he has not shown any suspicious behaviors to date. We have yet to confirm any interactions between him and the minstrel. We'll continue to follow their movements. Side story assault on the Imperial Guilds finished. There you go. That is Star Door 13. It answered a question. A very, very old question, which is where the hell did Cassius go in first chapter when he just peaced out in the prologue and we didn't see him again until after the final boss fight? Well, we eventually, like, we got to hear a little bit about what he was doing. That he was, uh... He... 
went out of the country. We have, I think we eventually learned that he was in Arabonia. I mean, eventually through Estelle and Joshua's travels, they kind of realized like, oh, there's no way he's still in Liberal. He must be somewhere else. But yes, he goes to Arabonia because he's called there by the guild. In fact, uh, I think we as the players knew it because uh, in the prologue of first chapter, though Estelle and Joshua aren't in the room, when Cassius checked the letter that was uh, delivered to him, he says, you know, a message from Arabonia. What? When he reads it, that's the message. They're like, hey, we're getting attacked here. We need you to come up to Arabonia to help us out. So the guild, uh, the guild in the empire was attacked across all major cities and especially in Heimdall, the capital. And it was a operation done by the Jester Jaeger Corps. Well, we've heard about Jester before. We've heard about uh, Jester through Campanella. The attack on the guild in Arabonia was a work done by Ouroboros. Remember, they had to get Cassius out of the country in order to kickstart the gospel plan and try to pull off the coup d'etat, or at least the part where Richard, you know, uh, unleashes the first seal on the Ariel using the gospel. Ouroboros knew that Cassius was such a threat they had to think of something to get him out of the country. Well, this was that thing. Now, the other thing that this plays into is, uh, well, for one, we actually heard a little bit about this recently in allusion to it in the last video <laughs> during Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, where Campy had like a sly comment there about how uh, well Cassius handled the situation. And uh, the first time we ever see Campanella in second chapter, uh, he flies in and he he's like on the landing port of the lakeside base and he meets with Luve and Weissman. And uh, him and Luve like exchange like a conversation alluding to the fact that Campanella just came from Arabonia and that he was, you know, involved in this whole Jaeger operation with Cassius, etc. So the thing is, there, there's one piece to this puzzle that we're missing and we already have it. It's just we got to put it in place. And that's that. Remember, uh, Olivier accused Osborne of being in contact with Ouroboros and he, he did it. Uh, to his face even in the flashback of Star Door 8. And uh, this is the deal. This was the contact. The Imperial government, or at least Osborne and his inner circle of people, such as Lecter, knew that this was this attack was going to happen. And you might think, well, they knew. Why didn't they do anything? Like, the Jaeger Corps is causing trouble in their borders. And the answer is... Osborne doesn't like the guild because why would he? He's a control freak. He wants control of everything in the Empire and a third party organization, an international citizens organization that is exists to, you know, protect justice and help the citizens, etc. That's in the way of him. He doesn't view the guild nearly as fondly as the Liberlian government does. So the fact that Ouroboros was like, hey, look the other way, we're going to do this thing where we attack the guild, and he was totally for it. He didn't care, and ultimately, I mean, who's to say what the exchanges were, but it was kind of like a, you know, sly handshake under the table, pat on the back, look the other way. Meanwhile, the Imperial government learns about the gospel plan and knows that orbital power is going to shut down in Liberal and the steam tanks get invented. It's it's just a huge mess. So now we know that Osborne's an even bigger asshole. <laughs> he gets worse and worse. It's awesome. <laughs> it's going to keep happening. Every time he shows up, it's just like, oh, God, I thought I did like you before, but it's going to get worse every time. I love it. What a dick. So that's the big question answered. This is the final door that like ties in with the whole, uh, with the whole uh, Arabonian story that we've been building up so far, dating back to Hawkingate, and then meeting Lecter and Star Door Eight. Now this Star Door. So there you go. So now what? Uh, let's check out the uh, the door list because I've got quite a few of them, like wrapped up now. I've been going back and doing sun doors. I finished the fishing one, which is a pain. The last fishing level is so hard and it's it's all RNG, it's bullshit, but I beat it. I did uh the second sun door, or excuse me, the second sun door three, which is the arena challenge with Zen. That was fun, I guess. I mean, I 
I'm missing one though. You see that uh, I don't have the invitation for it. I hope I haven't missed it. I ho hopefully I don't have to go look it up. And instead, I hopefully I'll come across it naturally. I also beat Jack at poker. That took a little while, but I eventually did it. Nothing special really happens. You know, the him and Hal just kind of congratulate you, say that they hope to see you again, which is either an allusion to the fact that like, hey, come play more poker, or the fact that we're going to meet them when we go to Calvert. Who knows? <laughs> just don't worry about it. Uh, I beat Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. That has four levels to it. I thought it was only three. Weirdly enough, the last one, which is called like uh, Maniac Difficulty, not actually that hard. I, I think the third level is like way harder, but I beat those. Take that, Campy. And uh, I got the Time Gem out of it, which is really good. Uh, I think it's better than it was in second chapter two. Like the second chapter version came with like a huge nerf, but that's gone now. So we have three doors we have not done in the entire game. That's uh, the last moon door, which I've been holding off on because it's long and borderline irrelevant, but I think we might do it at the start of the next video. And we have two star doors we have not yet to find. Star doors 14 and 15, which are mwah, superb. They are so good, I can't wait for them. We're about to find one of them, to be honest. So let's go do that, because we got a big boss fight on our hands. <laughs> Don't think you forgot that we got to the end of the uh, the Ark Sanctuary. Also, I went back and got the uh, stupid uh, fourth floor looking glass monument. I walked right by that goddamn thing. Someone someone saw it too and was like, Scott, why'd you, wa wa why'd you walk by that monument? I don't know. Because I didn't need it, okay? Get off my back. Whoops. I was just so confident I was going to kick Kilika's teeth in that I didn't do it. It happens. All right, save here. Let's go in here. I'm sure things won't get like super dramatic or emotional or anything. Ah, oh, listen to that music. It's like when we met Weissman. No one's going to comment on this bullshit. Ah, oh, yeah, listen to that. What a great scene that was in the second chapter. Allow me to congratulate you on making it here. Ah, there they are! <laughs> Quite a surprise to reunite with you all in this way, let me tell you. Fate is a splendidly peculiar thing, is it not? You sure know how to make a guy crack a smile. You came all this way just to give little old me a fight. Circumstances as they are, it is good to see you again. I figured you'd be the ones waiting for us. L Lucy! And there was I, thinking we would never meet again. I see fate had other ideas, although I can't say I'm unhappy about that. Walter. <laughs> we keep bumping into each other in the weirdest damn places, don't we? Looks like we're gonna get another chance to fight after all. Works for me. I say we get it on. Ah, there's no way we're walking away from this one. Probably no point in saying this, but take it easy on us, okay? As if you of all people need us going easy. Your game was up a long time ago, con man. I'd heard many a rumor regarding the church's heretic hunter in the past. But I feared such rumors were almost downplayed after learning he had the strength to slay the faceless one. You certainly did a flawless job of deceiving us. I don't believe we have any interest in avenging his death. But it's only right for us to repay our debts, and we certainly owe you one for swindling us. So come on, time for you to show your true colors and stop playing around. <sighs> well, and that's really what you want. There wasn't any point in holding back against you freaks anyway. You got your wish. I hereby acknowledge you as heretics. Let the hunt begin. <laughs> that's it! That's exactly what I wanted. You look every bit the monster I'd hoped you were. Just like us. Don't even think of holding back, kiddo. Not unless you want to end up splattered on the ground. Oh, I wouldn't dream of it at this point. By the time I walked through that door, my resolve was set. If I can't win here, I won't be fit to face him. So I'm going to come at you with all I've got. There's no way in hell I'll lose.
remix time. <laughs> my, my. We have a spectacular performance in store for us, don't we? You're telling me. I'm fired up just thinking about it. Then may the curtain rise. Let us begin a carnival for the ages. Illusory and infinite, spectacular and without end. Super range. Here we go. Three enforcers at once. So let's see. Start off with... Oh, they're a little too far apart. Come on, man. In that case... All right, let's clock up EX Joshua. Get out of here, Blue Block. All fights against him are personal for me. <laughs> Technically, I think this song is like an instrumental of the lyrical version, which is uh, titled Maybe It Was Faded. Yeah, there's a, there's a version of uh, that song with the lyrics. It's pretty cool, to be honest. Can I get both of them? Oh, I totally can. Oh, but the delay is big. Right, there you go, Joshua. Actually, let's look at Zen's arts. Yeah, I got Earthwall. Cool. Well, I'll put it on Kevin and Shara. Ah, that knocks Blue Block out of range. Let's see what Walter does. Here we go. Damn, two faints. Okay. That's alright though, that's alright. We'll be okay. Let's see, who would move first? It'd be Shara, right? There you go. Magic knives. That's with a strength bonus too. That's death I think he's resisting. That's what Joshua has on him. I'm gonna do this. Appropriate Kevin uses a Sigma, right? He did label them as heretics. Let's see. Actually, use it on yourself, Shara. Meanwhile, Zen. Unfortunately, no one's close enough for this, right? Yeah, I can't. Oh, I get these, them two. Ah, oh, there's the small status. I'm actually not sure which one this does. Okay, it must be accuracy. Hmm. Calamitous Blast. I don't want to move Kevin. All right, in this case, Joshua, heal, heal yourself. Shara, let's try this again. Abracadabra. Oh no, we got Fat Kevin and Fat Zen. Calamitous Blast again. Gale Lance. Alright, guards here. Man, no crits have showed up. Okay, okay. Let's help out Kevin. 
Oh no, Joshua's just out of range for it. Hmm. Does Celestial Bomb work on this? No, not Celestial Bomb. I'm thinking of, uh... Do... Where's my carry? Yeah, there it is. Does it work on these weird statuses? It does. Cool. All right, sit your ass down, Blue Block. Use another Kyria on Zen. You never got to see uh, Blue Block use his S Craft. All right, there's finally a uh, little uh, crit on the board. I don't have Impede with him, do I? Wait. Hmm. Darn it, I wish Kevin was like one spot ahead of Lucy. Because then I could have healed him, got him CP, and then put a uh, Grail Sphere on us. Oh, interesting. That's not what I was expecting her to do at all. No, not on Zen, damn it. Ah. Uh, sit back down. Get out of here, loser. He missed. Alright, Joshua. Time to do your thing. I wish they would have kept the bit where he cuts through the Ouroboros emblem. That's the second chapter only, though. There goes Walter. Alright, fight's pretty easy now. I spend, spent a little bit more CP than I wanted to. That's okay, though. I'm pretty sure I have a bunch, uh, or rather, I have a CP drink ready to go. Back at the garden. <laughs> Not bad. Look at all that seventh. Bah, I underestimated you guys. Oh, I had a lovely time, personally. I almost wish it could have lasted a little longer. I think we're fine with stopping here. Seriously. Regardless, you have defeated us. And with that, claim the right to challenge the fourth guardian. The first to be chosen by the Lord of Phantasma, and the last that you shall face. Defeating him will be no easy task. But hey, you managed to give the three of us a real workout. Don't go screwing up now, or I'm gonna kill you. We won't. I'd rather avoid death at your fist, so count on it. Lucy, I... Um... Does you being here mean... I'm afraid I can't answer that, dear. I'm not the real Luciola, after all. Whether the real one is living or dead is something I cannot know. Oh. The answer is surely out there, however. You'll just have to find it yourself once you return to your own world. But I would like to see this before I go. Your new look really suits you. <laughs> Thanks. Walter, there's something I should tell you. If you're talking about Kili, I already know. Something about her being scouted out for an intelligence agency in Calvert, right? Give her a message from me, Zen. Tell her she's never gonna get married if she doesn't stop overdoing the tough girl act. <laughs> Alright. I'll take the punch for you. Ah, oh, it appears our time is up. For now, I bid you all farewell. <laughs> Later. Oh, it's another warp circle. Right. 
On the other side of that circle awaits the area's final battle. You sure you're ready for this, Joshua? As ready as I'll ever be. Don't hold back for my sake. We can step inside as soon as you guys want. That's right. But first... Where the hell is it? <laughs> Do I not remember where the hell it's supposed to be? Maybe it's after I enter this circle. Or maybe it's... Maybe it's not. Maybe it's after we defeat the boss. There's supposed to be a door here. <laughs> Obviously, right? That's what I'm referring to. It'll show up eventually. Alright, let's go back to the base. I don't know why I was worried about CP. We're not bringing these two. No, you you, you don't belong here. This is a tough decision. Because uh, we only get to pick two people to bring with us. But I kind of tipped my hand when we first started exploring uh, the black version of the Glorious. I'd like to bring Ren. And Estelle's tempting. But I think I'd like to bring Agate. Agate didn't get closure at the end of second chapter. So maybe this will help. But first, we gotta get our drink on. Also, uh, I wonder if... I would think that some people's dialogue has changed. I hope Sharon's ends did. So now even Lucy's been recreated here. Running into her again should have been more strange than it actually was. But then again, she's always been right here with me in my heart. Hmm. Well, we'll meet again if it's meant to be. If it isn't, we won't. That's all there is to it. Right now, I'm a bracer, and that comes first. No intention of trying to find her. So yeah, that's an interesting development. As far as we knew, at the end of second chapter, uh, Lu Luciola died. But maybe that's not the case. Yeah, we saw those lines. I need to go find Zen. Zen will have something to say for Walter. I mean, that fight's also, uh, like, tough to pick characters for, because, again, you can only bring two. And I think uh, Zen and Shara are appropriate. Which means Blue Blanc doesn't really match up with anyone. I mean, theoretically, you could bring Olivier or Chloe, but I think the connections between Zen and Walter and uh, Luciol and Shara are way more important. I wonder what Walter's even doing out in the real world these days. He should be in a position where he can hear what's going on in Kilika's life, at least. Hmm. If he's got something he wants to tell her, he should just go and tell her himself instead of asking me, though. Anyway, next up is the fourth and final guardian. Good luck out there, Joshua. Thank you. Let's see, uh, we'll touch the monuments when we get some, uh, EP back for, uh, Kevin. Then we're good to go. Alright, back to the sixth plane. Time to address the elephant in the room. And fight, uh, this plane's final guardian. Let's save here. Just in case I screw this up. Totally possible. Yeah, they take you to like a special arena just for this one. The Farewell Arena. Where are we? Looks like our friends prepped an arena to have our final battle in. It seems that way. I can sense someone waiting for us right at the top of the staircase. Someone really powerful. Let's go. Well, here we go. I think we're ready for this fight. I hope Joshua's ready. It's a very strange situation that we find ourselves in. Because nothing like this, uh... This has happened before in the series, but at the same time, I don't know if it'll ever happen again like this. Welcome, orphan of a lost village. Greetings also to you, one who seeks atonement for his past transgressions, a stigma forever at his back. Sorry for the wait. Congratulations on moving your pieces this far across the game board. 
Should you defeat me, the final guardian, the end of this plane will finally be in sight. Hmm, <laughs> of course. That is a very big if. Can I ask you one thing before we begin? Oh? Why? Why do you wear that mask and hide your face from us? <laughs> what a foolish question. Because that is the will of my lord. What other reason could there possibly be? The real one! The reason for being here is that the Lord of Phantasma wanted you to be. I don't doubt that. But you hiding your face from us isn't their will at all. Enough with the lies! Joshua. Joshua, you... You all knew, huh? Sorry. My own inability to face reality has only made things harder for everyone. Hey, don't try and shoulder all the blame for this yourself. I think we all had our doubts. I know I did. Pretty much. I figured it out from the moment we met. I just... couldn't bring myself to say it. You seem to think you've worked something out. But I haven't got the faintest idea as to what. If you're so sure you're right, why not go ahead and say it? That is, if you feel you honestly have the resolve to do so. I won't. You won't? Why seek the obvious when I'll see for myself after cracking that mask to bits anyway? What matters to us right now is that if we can't defeat you, there's no future for any of us. So right now, I'm just going to leave who you really are out of the question. Not because I'm afraid to face up to the truth, or because I don't know what to do in the face of it. But because I must, and will, defeat you and overcome this trial before me. You're a hell of a stand-up guy, Joshua. <laughs> Same here. I've still got an unpaid debt to this guy, too. <laughs> I suppose I don't mind playing backup. <laughs> I didn't think that was all it took to get your fighting spirit back. Very well, then. Do as you will. Defeat me and break this mask. Black Dragon! Here we go. My name is Schwarzritter, Rider of the Black Dragon and Guardian of the Abyss. And in accordance to my pact with the Lord of Phantasma, I shall act as your next trial. Let the battle begin! Right! You got it! Whew. Well, let's check out, uh... Oh, I don't have bio info. Boo. -boo. Maybe if I whack him a little bit, we'll get more info into the uh, into the uh, Girls Rider notebook, the monster guide. All right. I'm gonna start off by doing a little bit of this. Just guard everyone. Why not? I didn't look up strategy, so I don't know if uh, an early S-Craft is possible. It'd be nice if it were. Oh yeah, check that out. I saved us. It only hit two of us. Agate and Rin still have two guards. Alright, so that should unguard Kevin and... Oh no, it only targeted Ren. Interesting. I thought that was all four of us. Ah, oh, it's not in range. Come on. Let's see. Do I have... Don't. We can do this, though. Luckily, the, uh, the Archaism has such a big hitbox that line attacks really work here. Preparing to use arts. Earth Guard. Hey. 
All right, let's get that off of you. that chain three you go damn he is so thick all right Kevin need to get CP back with him missed how embarrassing actually maybe we should start hitting on this thing I don't know if it has a revival ability. What if? What if it's like a uh, Potter Modder? Speaking of which, I would love uh, like a really cool um, crit to show up so that I could use Potter Modder effectively. This thing isn't nearly as strong as he is. Let's see. And it has no particular weakness. There you go, Agate. I can still get both of them. Hammer Knuckle. Miss Joshua, though. Rin still has that guard on. How lovely. Body split. There it is. <laughs> it's back there somewhere. The freaking arcade is walking. There he is. <laughs> that was goofy as hell. All right, clock up EX on Ren. Let's see. Can I stop him? Whoops. Crafts. Yeah, it's not going to happen. He's probably going to get that art in. Definitely. It's probably a heal. Finally, a crit showed up. Well, can't heal what's already dead. So it's probably gonna switch to himself, Latira. That's fine. Do it, Joshua. That's going to put the Latira on himself, though. Those chains are not doing nearly as much as I would hope they would. Thank goodness for Joshua's CP regeneration. Damn it. Doing this again already?
I'll wait for uh, the body craft to come to us. And then I'll worry about taking care of him. Here he comes. There he goes. Alright, we got another crit lined up. This might end him. Almost feels like overkill to bring Potter Potter in for this with a crit. Also, Red has not been targeted in this fight at all. She still has that guard on. It's over. Damn, that's a lot of Sephith. Holy shit. <laughs> Congratulations. You did as you said you would. You broke my mask. Well, you're right then. It really is you. I never thought I'd be so lucky to see you again. Not that I can imagine this reunion has much meaning for you at this point. <laughs> you have no idea. I was... scared, I think. I might have been given the chance to meet you again, but I knew from the start it was going to be short-lived. I knew I'd have to go through the pain of losing you a second time, so I tried to pretend I had no idea who you were to avoid it. That's why you ended up with that mask. It was my own weakness and inability to face up to the truth. Right? Precisely that. I was summoned within this world to act as the final, strongest guardian. That much you already know. It was the Lord of Phantasma who called me. But they weren't the one who decided I should wear this thing. That was likely all of you. This world changes as a result of one's thoughts and desires. It's not at all impossible for that to be the case. I thought so. Now thanks to your efforts, my job here is finally done. <laughs> to tell you the truth, with the Dragon to support me, I didn't actually expect you to win. <laughs> I barely did, with everyone here by my side at that. Well, working with others to achieve a goal isn't a sign of weakness. So, I get Crosser. I see you've been able to improve leaps and bounds since we last crossed swords. You're actually swinging that heavy blade of yours with a fair bit of skill now. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever get used to hearing compliments coming out of your mouth. Still, I've got a long ways to go as a swordsman, just like I've got a long ways to go as a guy. I'll keep at it, bit by bit. That definitely wasn't the response I was expecting. <laughs> you were once so reckless. But now you have all the composure of a man who settled down and started a family. Th the hell's that supposed to mean? As for you, Ren, I never even had the chance to say goodbye to you the first time, did I? I'm sorry. I wouldn't have chosen to leave you that way. It's not your fault. Besides, if you and Joshua hadn't stepped in and saved me, I'd still be alone today. So I'm not mad. I'll always be grateful to you. Thank you. <laughs> Under any other circumstances, I'd ask for you to pat my head one last time. But those claws of yours look like they kind of hurt, so maybe it's better if you don't. <laughs> I'm sorry there, too. So, Kevin Graham, can you finally have complete confidence in your theory? Yep. Every last shred of doubt in my mind is gone. I'll make sure everyone you care about gets home safe and sound. You can count on it, Luve. In that case, count on you I shall. I think this goes without saying, but the Lord of Phantasma is no ordinary foe. This won't be easy for you, but don't mistake what you need to do. Thanks. I'll take the warning to heart. I guess this is it, huh? 
<laughs> I'm afraid so. I can finally return to where I belong. Yeah. I delivered your sword to Karin, by the way. Thank you. Don't worry about us. We'll be resting in peace together. Well, Joshua. Yeah. Goodbye, Luve. And there was Karin. You gonna be okay, Joshua? I'm fine. This was always how this was going to end. Besides, the last time I lost him, all I did was act like a child who couldn't let go and worry him in his final moments. This time, I was actually able to properly say goodbye. Yeah. I'm glad you could. Well, I've done what I needed to now. I'll leave everything to you now, Kevin. No problem. Now that we've defeated the final guardian, the path along the scenic route should now be open. Let's head on over. The one leading to the Royal Villa, right? Got it. Damn, and it keeps playing too. The theme of Hommel. So I think you can warp back- no you can't! Okay, cool. They want you to go out the long way. I vaguely recalled that. They wanted you to soak it in. But I also think that this warp point down at the bottom of the stairs might disappear upon us uh, going back through it. They don't want you to come back to this area. Hey, where did the warp circle go? And taking its place, a new star door. W what? Well, that's foreboding. Actually, thinking about it, it's possible it was this door that was here first, and the warp appeared later and took its place. Hmm, that would make sense. Wow, they really. Gave you a cutscene just for this door. It's almost like it's pretty important. All is one, and one is all. All begins with one, and in the end, it returns to one. Only when you have released all the other doors shall this one open. Very strange, huh? So it's Star Door 14. And there's the fact that, uh, well, we still have to do Moon Door 5, of course. But there's one Star Door after this. There's a Star Door 15. And yet, this door's technically the last one, because you have to do all of them before you can enter this one. Strange, right? Like, why not just put this one later? Well, the simple answer is, without giving away spoilers, is that they had to... Well, they wanted to put it in this exact physical location. Even though this isn't the last area of the game. But that's the simple answer. Let's get out of here. Let's go back to the base. Oh, I fought that fight without support. I'm stupid. That's right, because Agate was my support before, I think. Whoops. Just proves how good I am. I beat Luve even without it. Now, I imagine people's dialogue has changed. The final barrier that's stopping you has disappeared from what I can tell. However, I'm afraid I'm unable to ascertain anything about the air beyond it. I couldn't tell you why. Hmm, Kevin has his suspicions. No one over here. Let's go check out the pond. Hmm. Let's talk to these two first and, uh... Ooh, Reese is finally gone. Because I have a feeling Joshua will go sit next to Estelle after all that. 
Joshua really has gotten a whole lot tougher and more dependable since he started that journey by the looks of it. I'm sure he still has plenty of room for improvement, but the same applies to all of us. I'm certainly no exception. Both Joshua and Estelle really seem to have grown stronger and more dependable since they left on their journey, and I'm looking forward to seeing just how much they can grow by the end of it. By the way, Olivier, when we'd arrived in the Empire, Hummel wasn't sealed off anymore. I heard that it had been done on your orders, too. So I just wanted to say thank you. Hmm, think nothing of it. We are soulmates, you and I. I only did what was natural. Still, if you truly wish to thank me, do it less with sweet words and more with your ever sweeter lips. <laughs> you might be a member of the Imperial family, but if anything, I think that would make it even harder to raise the issue of Hamo. So I really do appreciate you doing what you did. <laughs> well, you're right. With my position, I can't even get close to the place without leaving an endless number of scandals in my wake. Were it up to me, I'd go and place an offering of flowers there, but alas, I'm going to have to leave that to you. Hmm. Sitting here, I can't help but think about the ancients who lived in the Liberarch during the, its heyday. I can't pretend to be an expert on why this paradise caused ruin by granting people's wishes. But I still believe people have the right to wish for their dreams to come true. Is that an empty glass, I spy Olivier? This won't do at all. Should I pour you another one? <laughs> Please no! Any more of my consciousness will escape me! <laughs> Wait, what was that last one? I also believe I have the right to refuse libations in the face of danger, so please, no more! Alright, so let me go into the party, and uh, I'll take off Joshua, and put on Shara, and Olivier. So I imagine Joshua goes there, yep. Also, Agate goes here, too. Phew. Okay, I think it's about time we get moving. Next up is the seventh plane, right? We're off to the seventh plane next, right? The first place the Lord Phantasma made when they came in here, or whatever. We're gonna need to be on guard while we're at, we're there, no doubt. Yeah. You big dummy. I come to cheer you up, and yet you already picked yourself up and dusted yourself off. You can lean on me once in a while, you know? Having a big sister has its perks. If anything, right now, I'm actually grateful to the Lord of Phantasma. Thanks to them, I was able to say what I couldn't back on the Liber Arc. Heh, <laughs> kind of like how I felt when I was able to meet Mom again through Uchiola's illusion then. Well, I hope Luvay's up there with Karn, feeling just as peaceful as we do now. Yeah. Looking at this water kind of reminds me of the pond behind our house, actually. You'd always sulk back there when we were kids. Ooh. <laughs> oh, we wouldn't have seen that if Ren wasn't with us. Oh, that's so cool. Aw. It's been a while since I last felt so at ease. Aw. Oh, that look by Ren. Oh, that's worth a million dollars. Holy shit. That's so missable. I love it. I love you, Falcom. <laughs> that is the- oh, that feels so good. It feels so rewarding. How- how would I ever have known? How could anyone possibly know? Even if you read the script, you wouldn't know, because it's just a set of ellipses. You have no context for what that is. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Oh my god. <sighs> no matter how much I think on it, I can't find an answer. The Lord of Phantasma is the reason of all of this is happening. What are they trying to achieve? They have control of a world they can grant humanity's every wish. What else could they want from it? Heavy thinking like this isn't my strong point, I've got to admit. I wish Kiliko was here to take on this job. <laughs> true enough. Hey, take it easy. Everyone needs to rest from time to time, you know? Come on, have a drink of this and take a load off. Wait, what is she offering? I swear, this princess. I don't know why she won't just rely on some of us instead of trying to investigate by herself. I'm trying to talk to Chloe, but there we go. <laughs> the dialogue box is really specific. Sorry, Joseph. I've always had this habit of getting really engrossed in things when I'm doing them. This place is incredibly calming somehow, isn't it? 
I've been more surprised than anything when I first found myself here, but now I'm actually quite comfortable. Rod just said, nope, we got all your lines. Mueller, it seems like we're finally able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Now we just need to keep walking towards it, for the sake of everyone we know, including those no longer with us because of the Ariel. Let's see what this seventh plane has in store for us, shall we? Well, this is just my personal belief, and I will never have a chance to find out if it is right. I can't help but feel that 2nd Lieutenant Lawrence may have admired the Colonel on a personal level, too. I don't have any hard evidence to back up my belief, of course. Just call it instinct. Man, Richard would have been a really interesting pull for that fight, admittedly. I mean, I went with Agate because him and Luve had like that rivalry going, and I felt guilty about not bringing Agate to uh, Luve's proper fight at the end of second chapter. But yeah, Richard must be an interesting one to bring there. Seems like we're finally... Ah, oh, it's the same. Oh, but he gets interesting dialogue with uh, Ollie. But of course, my love. And who exactly is your love? <laughs> While there's no doubt that 2nd Lieutenant Lawrence used the Intelligence Division, I don't think that was the only reason he served in it. While I don't have any hard evidence, that's uh, the same. Okay. <laughs> I can't sit around idly now. Now when I... Not when I work... Oh, that's a major typo. Whoa, Exceed, come on. Not when I work to be doing. Not when I have work to be doing. The time to take on the Lord of Phantasma and bring all of this to an end seems to be almost upon us, too. We're almost there. Now that we've defeated the Schwarz Raider, we should have taken all of the enemy's pieces. All that remains is to settle the score with the Lord of Phantasma. He really doesn't have much to say. I wonder if, like, somewhere Richard might have a little bit of, like, a grudge towards uh, Luve. I mean, given that, you know, he was kind of part of the plan to manipulate him oh I see yeah I only know part of the story but I think Luve must have always wanted a chance to properly say goodbye to Joshua too I'm happy he was finally given the chance and that Joshua was able to say a proper goodbye to him too I'm sure Joshua is just as happy in his own way yeah me too indeed I'm glad Ren was able to say goodbye to him as well a shame huh I never expected to hear something like that from you Nevertheless, I appreciate the sentiment. Perhaps now that you have, you could read him a story from the Testaments? It would be my pleasure. Perhaps this would be a good time to read a story from one of the Testaments. I am a sister of the church after all. Mm, this is pretty much the same. Whoa! That, that was not YouTube. That was the game. Holy shit, that was weird. I think that's pretty much everyone except for uh, for Ren. So let me get Ren off the party. Whoops. Every time. Wrong freaking button. Alright, where does Ren go? She doesn't go here. So where is she? Maybe she was spying on uh, Estelle and Joshua. Maybe, okay, maybe you get that uh, ellipses line from her no matter what. She could be right next to them. But maybe, uh, maybe she's like behind the pillar next to them or something. Looking in very coyly. Or maybe she goes to the library. We haven't gone to the library. I'm dumb. <laughs> I don't know if anyone was over there, like, prior. Like, they really shoved a lot of people into the other areas. No, no one's here. Interesting. They, they don't really do this, right? Every time there's always, a, like, a decent distribution of uh, three groups across the three areas. So I guess she is over there. Did I get excited for nothing? Would I have seen that uh, Ren line no matter what? I'm starting to think that's the case. Darn it. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> Yay. My instinct was right. Oh, good evening. It's a lovely night, isn't it? It's a shame we can't see the moon from here, but the stars are pretty enough to make up for that. Um, Ren? <laughs> I've got a really neat idea, actually. It's not often you have this many strange people in one place. So how about we all go and play hide and seek in that really black glorious? Doesn't that sound exciting? Out of all of us, you're by far the most familiar with the glorious' layout. I'd say you would have an unfair advantage. I'm not opposed to the idea, but we need additional rules to even out the odds. You're actually up for it? <laughs> okay, so the ellipses line was unique. Ah, oh, it's just, it's so fun. 
so so much fun because they're really starting to play into the uh, the Asel Joshua and Ren angle, and uh, Asel and Joshua's big goal to catch up to Ren outside of Phantasma. All right, this is where we stop now. We went a little over, but it was worth it. You know, we had a we had a wind down from the big emotional fight with Luve, the big elephant in the room that he was always the shortest Ritter, and it's obvious immediately. It's like, oh, who's the who's that masked man? Who could it possibly be? I don't know why, but Japan loves to do that bullshit. <laughs> All right, so when we pick up next time, we're gonna do uh, the final moon door. Now's a good time. Things have settled down a little bit. Yeah, the last little area of the plane is unlocked, but that's uh, that's gonna be a little weird and different. It's going to lead into uh, the start of essentially the final act, getting through this plane. I mean, technically, like we're like almost at the end of the game so it's it's kind of hard to say that like this far in is the start of the final act but whatever it'll it'll be dramatic but right now we got a chance to you know step back catch our breath and see a really bizarre moon door that is very strange so strange that I went a year of deleting that from my brain and that I didn't remember at all what was in it until a few days ago when I peeked inside of it how very unusual It'll be, it'll be something. See you guys in the next one.